Well, two weeks remain in the um, in the baseball season, and oh boy, I just want to get this over with without me open. I'm still, I'm just still a little bit ticked off about what I read earlier today. Um, so apparently, Aaron Boone, our esteemed manager, isn't really in panic mode right now regarding the state of the Yankees. He says he sees no problem with our effort. Let me see if I got this right. It's the latter half of September. We're 715 after winning 20 after winning uh, 13 in a row. The offense is a gelling. The defense is a gelling. Pitchers are getting knocked around. We gave up 22 runs at home to an Indians team who got no hit four times. And there's nothing wrong with our effort. I'm I'm sorry. I just can't. I just can't anymore. I really can't. You know that Tyra Banks gif slash meme from America's Next Top Model? That's what's running in my head right now. I spent pretty much his entire tenure um, uh, 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 def defending this guy. Yankee fans wanted him canned. I thought he was a huge step above, um, above um, Joe Girardi, who made a lot of mistakes in the, la in the latter years of his time managing the Yankees. I really did. Managers don't talk like that. Managers of any team don't talk like that when a team is descending, descending in a playoff race this late in September. Managers of any team don't talk like that. Let alone the manager of the New York, by God, Yankees. A team that has expect the same expectations literally every year. World Series or bust. World Series or bust. Yet we are are sinking ship, and our manager is 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 is, is, is what's his, what's to say? He's whistling through the cemetery, like everything is fine. Everything is not fine. What's happening to the Yankees is the reason why I've only watched two games the last. Uh, uh, like eight nine days. I can't take it. Mm -mm. I can't stress. I can't stress over that anymore. Absolutely not. This. Uh, 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 I just. <laughs> it's just awful what's happening with um, this Yankees team this year. And quite frankly, I don't know if we're gonna make the postseason. I really don't. I. Uh, I would be if I showed any bit of optimism. I'd be lying. I'd be lying to myself. I'd be lying to fellow Yankee fans. I don't know. I really don't. We're a game and a half out with two weeks left. A game and a half isn't much. But with two weeks left and the way the team's going, it's basically like we may as well be six, seven games out. It's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. And with the way Boone is handling this, this late with time running off, Time right now, honestly, I feel like there's a knife in my back right now. I feel betrayed as a Yankees fan. I really do. He was supposed to be different from Girardi. Girardi has made many missteps with the Yankees. Even he wouldn't say this. On to some more positive notes. Uh, congratulations go out to the uh, Brewers, Giants, and the Dodgers. Those three clinched playoff spots uh, this past week. Yeah, the Giants were first. Nobody thought they would get in the playoffs. Actually, entering this last week, they had a nine. Entering the season, I'm sorry, they had a nine percent chance of making the postseason. And I think even less than winning the division because everybody thought. Well, the Dodgers were defending champions, and the Padres were the team on the rise. So everybody thought, by the way, I'm playing this game, uh, the, the small town uh, murders uh, match three game. That's why I'm kind of looking down. That's what I'm looking down at. Um, everybody pretty much had 
the, 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 the Dodgers and the Padres contending. The Dodgers, of course, are defending champs, and the Padres were the team on the rise with Fernando Tetis Jr. and all those hitters. So everybody figured that um, those two would be on top of the West and the Giants would be just there. But they had other plans. They started winning games, and now they I think they have the best record in, I believe, baseball. Whew. They're, they're going to be the first team to 100. Um, looks like. So, um, yeah, so the Giants are in, the Dodgers are in, the Brewers got in. Uh, this 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 week this past weekend though they've been having problems they entered this they entered this past week with a match number five with the division it's only down to three because they've been losing games but um yeah so um so so those three in at least two spots left in the um in the national league and only one's going to go to the AL, NL East because it's so mediocre, which means the other spot, the other wild card spot is going to be either in the Central or the West. It's going to be interesting. And, um, yeah, so, meanwhile, magic numbers in the American League are dwindling because that's what they do with two weeks left. So, here's a, story, here's a complete story so far as I finish this level, and that's done. Okay, so the story so far. Tampa, match number six to clinch the East. They haven't clinched the playoff spot yet. Um, I think the badge number for that is four to get in the postseason because we're the number one bubble team. Um, uh, the White Sox badge number is four to win the division. To win the AL Central. Uh, for the AL West, Houston's match number is eight. They have a six-game lead over Oakland, you know, up by eight over Seattle, who's in third place. Uh, Atlanta has the largest magic number. It's 13 because it's pretty close to them in Philly. But, um, yeah, it's an inconsistent division. Uh, Milwaukee, they're in the postseason, but their magic number to win the division is three. And their next series is at home against St. Louis. They're the second-place team, which means um, it's a four-game set, which means even if they split two and two, Milwaukee gets the Central. Uh, San Francisco's magic number, even though it's close to them, the Dodgers, their magic number is 12, which is one smaller than Atlanta. So, um, so um, yeah, it's going to be a close race um, for the rest of the way for the Dodgers and Giants. And again, it's scoreboard watching for these two because they're done playing with, played against each other. For the regular season, unless they end up tied, then their 20th meeting could take place, I think, on uh, October 4th, because that's the open day for any and all tiebreakers. Um, as far as the wild card, Boston and Toronto would be the wild cards. Boston's number one wild card, uh, one game ahead of Toronto. Toronto leads by a game and a half over the Yankees. Uh, Oakland is two games out. Seattle's four games out. Um, so they have an outside shot. And I do mean outside. Um, as far as the National League, as far as the National League goes, uh, St. Louis, the Cardinals. You know, I think it's a trend with St. Louis teams. Just when you think they're dead, they jump up, they jump up back to life. The Cardinals did this 10 years ago. Remember? That crazy 2011 season, September 2011, the, uh, the Cardinals entered, I think, about seven, eight games out of, a, out of, a, out of the wild card spot. Back then, it was only one. It was the last season would be only one. And, um... And uh, they ended up winning games left and right, made the postseason, went on to win the World Series that year. And uh, it's kind of a thing with St. Louis teams because the St. Louis Blues did the same thing. Remember in 2019, they entered that year, that calendar year, with the worst record in the league. And then and then five months later, they hoisted the Stanley Cup. So so St. Louis, St. Louis sports and resurrection seem to go hand in hand. Uh, but the, the Cardinals have a three-game lead. Their magic number is 11 to... Uh, Get the get that last wild card. Um, since Cincinnati's three games out, Philly and San Diego are Philly and San Diego are three and a half games out. The car, uh, the Padres. Oh my goodness, the Padres. What's happening? They are falling off. They keep falling off. They've lost three in a row. They've lost eight out of their last ten. They are falling off. What's going on here? Uh, the Mets have literally an outside shot. They're under 500, but they're seven games out in the wild card race. 
Um, and they're elimination number seven, so they need to kind of get it going. Otherwise, it's going to be another dis it's going to be a disappointing end, especially since they led the NL East for so for pretty much a good bit of the season. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on entering uh, the final two weeks. Two weeks left, and that's something. Two weeks left this season. Uh, the matchups in the National League it will be the Cardinals going to LA for the Wild Card game. The winner will face San Francisco. So. We could see a first ever, if the Dodgers win that game, we could see the first ever postseason meeting between the Giants and the Dodgers. It's true. Giants and Dodgers have never played each other in an actual playoff series. They had that best of three tiebreaker, but that's part of regular season back in 1951. That's the closest they really came, 70 years. Uh, the other series would be the Braves going, or I should say returning, <laughs> to Milwaukee to face the Brewers. That's going to be an interesting series, especially since... Um, uh, Braves, well, Braves and the same Milwaukee, those two things, what, you know what those two things have in common? The late, great Henry Aaron. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Uh, the American League, in, Amer the, in the American League, the wild cards would be the Red Sox and the Blue Jays, the game would be in Fenway, uh, the winner would face, the winner would face, uh, Tampa Bay. Oh boy, if Tampa Bay wins the World Series, oh boy. Like, Florida hasn't had enough championships in the last year since this pandemic um and it would be it would be the astros and the white Sox in a world series rematch yeah uh back when the astros won the national league uh they and, and won their first ever pennant in 2005 they faced the white Sox in the world series and the white Sox swept them four straight to win their first championship in 88 years and uh if the season ended right now this would this would be this would be the uh, one of the division series, uh, a rematch of that fall classic. So yeah, so that's what we're looking at, and um, that's my re that's my recap of the pennant races, which is two weeks left the season. I'll be back in a couple of days to uh, I'll be back in a couple of days to uh, recap week two of the NFL season. Uh, if you like what you if you like what you're watching, click like and subscribe. Uh, my story on vocal about uh, about the uh, latest in the pennant races will be up on the description below so check it out give it a read and uh, I'll, with that I'll just say stay tuned <laughs>